Hi there, this is Anmesh and today I'm going to share with you the PHP method of frequency separation to create beautiful skin in Photoshop. It's a simple three-step process that stands for patching, healing and polishing. Following these three steps would make the process of applying frequency separation much easier and get you great results at the same time. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and in this video, we'll just focus on frequency separation. If you want to learn what to do before frequency separation or after it, we have got some great guides. So please check the link in the description. Before we begin, this photo was submitted by Yoris Brower. Thank you so much Yoris for submitting this fantastic photo. You can check more of his amazing work right here. We are back in Photoshop and before applying any frequency separation, first of all, we need to remove the blemishes. And how do we do that? Very easy. Create a new layer on top of the background layer. Click on the new layer button. And you can name this layer blemishes and just zoom in quite a bit and select the regular healing brush tool. If you don't have time, you can use the spot healing brush tool. But if you want the most accurate results, use the regular healing brush tool. So click and hold, select the healing brush tool, not the spot, the regular one. Select that one and it's very simple from now on. Make sure that sample is current and below. Blend mode has to be normal. Now zoom in and simply hold the Alt or Option, click to take a sample and just paint on the blemishes. Keep on doing it. Now, it's going to take you a while. We have a complete guide on removing blemishes. You can check it right here, explaining a lot of varieties. So, I've already done this for you. So, let's skip to that. As you can see, we have removed all the blemishes. Here's the before and here is the after. Now keep in mind we only removed the small blemishes. In other words, we removed the small irregularities. We did not touch the big ones like the eye bags. Why? Because we'll deal with them in frequency separation. The only reason we removed the small blemishes is because when you apply frequency separation, your blemishes might show up in both the high frequency and the low frequency layer and you would have to remove them from both of them. It can be hectic. So it's best to remove them beforehand. Now it's time for us to separate the image into high frequency and low frequency. So the high frequency layer will have all the details, the textures of the image, while the low frequency layer will have the color information so that we can work on them separately. And if you want to understand how to do that manually or how does it work, you can check out this video. In this video, we'll use an action to do it. So all you need to do, you need to go to window and then actions and you will find this pix frequency separation action which is available for you to download. So check the link in the description, download the action and then you can load the action very easily by clicking on this grid right there and just select load action, locate the action and it will be imported into this actions dialog box, right? Just open the setup, pix frequency separation. Now if your image is 16 bit, just select the first one, FS frequency separation 16 bit. If your image is 8 bit, use the second one. Now, if you want to know and you cannot see it here, you can also go to image mode, make sure what is checked, 16 or 8. 16 is checked, select the 16, 8 is checked, select the 8. So this image is 16 as I can see at the top. I'm going to choose 16 and then just hit the play button. Make sure you have selected the top most layer while you play this action. A dialog box will show up with Gaussian Blur. All you need to do here is take the radius all the way to the left. Gradually increase it to the point where the skin texture completely goes away. So you can zoom in right here or you can move into this preview and let's move to the skin. You can just zoom in and increase the radius. For this image, I'm going to choose a radius of 8. Okay, Just at the point where the skin texture goes away, stop right, and hit OK. Now it will do its job automatically. And as you can see, we have a new group, frequency separation, 16 bit, picks imperfect. Now, if you zoom out and if I turn off this group, and even if I turn on this group, it looks the same because in this group, have a look at this. We have two layers, the low frequency and the high frequency. Both of them combine together to give you the same image. Therefore, we can say that the image has successfully been separated into two layers, high frequency and low frequency. Now, if I turn all of these off at the bottom, you'll be able to see it properly. So in the low frequency, we only have the colors. Have a look at this, only the colors, no details or textures, right? And if I turn on the high frequency, this only has the details. So both of them combine together to give you the same image. Now, 
Let's turn everything else on. All right. The first step in PHP method of frequency separation is P, which stands for patching. Now, as the name suggests, we will be using the patch tool. However, an important point to note is that we will only target the big details, the big stuff. All right. So first of all, select the low frequency limb and then press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of it. Now let's name this layer patching. Double click on the text and let's name it patching. Now let's select the patch tool. So if you cannot see the patch tool, click and hold on the healing brush tool group and you will find the patch tool. Now target the big details. So for your assistance, you can turn off the high frequency layer, turn that off. Now have a look, we have an eye bag right there. So just make a selection around it. But before you do anything, make sure the patch is normal source is selected and the diffusion is at five. Now make a selection around that just like so. Now click and drag it from an area where you want to sample from. For example, you have an eye bag right there. What part of the skin do you want to replace it with? So click and drag and release to an area where you want to replace it with. Okay, so I'm going to release it right there. Have a look at this. It's gone. So if I turn on the high frequency layer, here's the before, here's the after, gone. Let's zoom out and have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. So easily in just one step, it's gone. Let's turn off the high frequency layer again. And we might have to do some fine tuning here. I see this line right there. So we need to take care of that. So let's make a selection of that line. And we'll just click and drag again. It's becoming smoother. Nice. Gone. Now have a look at this patch on the forehead. Let's take care of that as well. So we will just make a selection around it and drag right there. Gone. Now let's deal with this one. Let's see where we can take sample from. It's gone. Wow. This is wonderful, isn't it? So let's do this area taken care of easily. As easy as that. There's nothing complex right there. Gone. So if I show you the before and after, so here's the before it, the patch was right there. If I turn it on, the patch is gone. Let's turn on the high frequency list so that we can see the overall image. So here's the before, here's the after so easily. We took care of that. Now I'm going to speed up the process so that you don't get monotonous. So we have finally finished the patching process. Let me show you the before and after. So here is the before and here is the after. If I turn on the high frequency layer, it will be more clearer to you. Let's turn on high frequency and here is the before and here is the after. Wasn't that so easy? Now, if you want, you can stop right here. Sometimes you don't even have to do the H and the P. You can stop at patch. So these steps are made in such a way that if the first step does it, stop right there. If the second step does it, stop right there. The third step is the final step. It will do everything. If none of the first two steps work, third step will save you. All right. The next step here is healing. For healing, all you need to do is to create a new layer. So click on the new layer button just above the patching and below the high frequency adjustment layer. Keep in mind, everything we are doing is in the frequency separation group. And even inside of that, everything we are doing is in between high frequency and low frequency. So layer one, let's name it healing. Now, again, as the name suggests, we will be using the healing brush tool. And now we will be targeting the small details. So just target the small stuff. Let's select the healing brush tool. Click and hold in the patch tool group and choose healing brush tool. Easy. Now just zoom in and start taking care of the irregularities. For your assistance again, you can turn off the high frequency layer. 
Before using the healing brush tool, since we are painting on a new layer, make sure the sample is current and below and the blend mode is normal. Now let's start removing those irregularities. Also make sure the high frequency is turned off. Now for your assistance, you can also do this. You can create a curves adjustment layer at the top to see more of the irregularities. So click on the adjustment layer and then choose curves and then just make the highlights a little brighter and make the shadows a little darker. Now you can see even more. This is just for enhancing the details. That's it. Let's get back to the healing layer. Now, once you're back, just hold Alt or Option, click to take a sample and paint on these areas to soften them up. Just easy, very easy. So I'm just going to make the highlights of the curves a little darker so that I can see what's happening right there. Okay, there you go. Now let's get back to the healing layer. And then as you can see, there's a line over there. We need to take care of that. Paint on that line to soften that up. Soften this up as well. Very easy, nothing difficult. Now only take care of the areas which are distracting or doesn't look right. So there's a pattern of skin right there. We don't want to soften it all up. It will make it look unnatural. We don't want that. So only if an area doesn't look that good, like this area, it's distracting here. So I'm gonna paint over there. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Just those tiny areas, right? And if I turn on the high frequency, you'll be able to see the difference. Let's turn off the curves. So here is the before, before applying healing. And here is the after. Can you see it? Let me just zoom in. Here's the before, here's the after. So subtle, easy and natural. Now let's turn off the high frequency again and let's begin doing it. Now, is there anything that you can see? that stands out or doesn't look great. So as you can see right here, there's a little bit of gap. So I'm gonna take a sample from here by holding the Alt or Option, click to take a sample and just paint on that area. That gap is now filled before, after. You see, we filled the gap right there. If you do it with the brush, it can be a little difficult to do. See, here's the before, here's the after. We removed that irregularity easily. Now, let me show you the before and after. If I turn on high frequency, here before healing and after healing. See, focus, notice over here and here, before, after. Easy, right? So let's speed up the process again. Just wanted to point out that if you do a mistake somewhere, you can simply take the eraser tool and erase it because it's on a separate layer. You can simply erase that and redo that again with the help of the healing brush tool. I think I really don't like editing this area. So I'll just erase that area. That was the original was better. There we go. We take the healing brush tool again and just start working on other areas. From time to time, you can also turn on the high frequency and have a look at the before and after. So here's the before, here's the after, and then just go from there, before, after. Let's turn this off again and start working. Now it's completely your choice. You can always keep it turned on and then keep on editing, or you can keep it turned off as well. Your call. So the healing process is finished as well. So here is the before and here is the after. We took care of the small stuff, the small details. So let's turn on high frequency and here's the before, here is the after. Now, if you want, you can turn down the opacity of the healing layer to get more natural results. So as we decrease the opacity, the changes that we have made would fade away and the original would come back. So if the opacity is at zero, all of those irregularities show up. As we increase the opacity, they begin to fade away. So for this example, I can keep it at about 56 or 60%, but to show you the before and after more clearly, I'm gonna keep it at 100, just for representation. Now, let's have a look. Final look at the overall before and after. Before, after, 
massive difference, subtle and natural at the same time. However, there are a couple of things that we need to fix. Have a look at the image more closely. If I turn off the high frequency, let me show you. Have a look at the lip. This should have been seamless, but there's a light which is causing this bump over there. It just isn't looking right. Have a look right here. The transition on the nose is very irregular. If you look closely, look, there's brightness and then suddenly there's a little bit of darkness. So the only tool that can take care of this is the legendary brush tool. And therefore, we move to the third step of PHP method of frequency separation, which is P stands for polishing and polishing will be done with the help of the brush tool. So let's create a new layer above healing. Okay. And we can name this polishing. Okay. Now simply take the brush tool. Make sure you have the soft round brush selected. If you're using a tablet, you can also use pressure sensitivity with the help of this brush, soft round pressure opacity and flow. But soft round brush will do just fine. Next, decrease the flow to somewhere about one or two percent. For this example, let's choose two percent. Now let's take care of these irregularities. First of all, let's take care of the lip. So make sure when you take a sample by holding the Alt or Option, and click to take a sample. It's not sampling from the curves adjustment layer. We don't want that. And to make sure that happens, let's go to the eyedropper tool for once and then make sure the sample is current and below. The sample size can be three by three or five by five. Let's choose five by five so that it takes the average sample, not just pixel sample, right? Anyway, it's blurred, so it doesn't matter much, but let's take the brush. Now hold the Alt or Option and click to take a sample and then just simply paint. Alt or Option, click on the top to take a sample and then paint. Therefore, we easily covered up that area. That was very easy to do. Now let's have a look. Here is the after, here is the before. After, such a massive difference. If I turn on high frequency, let me show you. Here's the before, here's the after. Looks amazing, doesn't it? Now let's take care of the nose. Let's move to the nose and let's turn off the high frequency so that we can see the irregularities more clearly. And now let's rotate the image. Hold R, rotate it, and then release R. You go back to the brush tool. Now we can paint in straight lines easily, right? It's difficult to paint top to bottom, up and down, but it's easy to paint horizontally. So now what we'll do, we'll take a sample from here. We'll just paint straight. As easy as that. Nothing complex here. Just softening the transition. Take a sample, paint around. Take a sample, paint around. Just like you were painting a real painting. So have a look. Here's the before. Here's the after. It's so streamlined, so much more better. You can also do polishing on separate layers so that you can control the opacity of those. I think I should have done the nose one on a separate layer because I need to decrease the opacity of it. But if I do decrease the opacity of it, the opacity of the lip area will also decrease. So how do we solve that? Well, it's easy. Let me show you how. Here's the before, here's the after, but I need to decrease the opacity. I want it to be on a separate layer. Easy. Select the lasso tool right there and make a selection of the nose area that you painted. Okay. Now press Control Shift J, Command Shift J. Okay. Now you have it on a separate layer. You can name this Polishing 2. I'm just going to name it P2 and you can decrease the opacity of this one. I'm going to keep it at about 43-ish. 41 is fine. Let's create one more layer and this can be P3, Polishing 3rd. And from here, let's take the brush again, take a sample and paint. So always keep doing an area on a separate layer so that you can control the opacity. Before, after. See how nice this looks right now? All right, hold the R and click on Reset View, release the R, we are back to the brush tool. Now the nose looks perfect. Let's zoom in and do it over here. We might have to just decrease the opacity of this one as well. All right, 29 is fine. Let's create one more. 
the nose can be a little difficult sometimes. I think this looks fine. Let's rotate it a little bit and let's take care of this area. Right, it's beautiful, it's nice. Is there any other area that you need to take care of? Let's reset the view. Maybe this area a little bit. And if you're stuck in the rotate tool, press B to get back to the brush tool. Let's take a sample and paint. These areas are fine. Maybe I'll just paint this area a little bit. Great. All of the other areas look great. Now let's have a look at the before and after. If I turn on high frequency, so here is before brushing. See the irregularities on the nose. And here is after brushing. Just the nose area and just this layer. So you need to make a group of all of those polishing layers. Select the first one. Let's name it P4 and hold the shift key, select the last polishing layer. Everything in between will be selected. Press Ctrl or Command G to make a group of all of those polishing layers and we can name this polishing. Okay, let's have a look before and after polishing. Before polishing, look at the nose, it's just very irregular. If I turn this on, the lip also changes, this area also changes and it all looks beautiful. Now we don't need curves anymore. Let's delete the curves adjustment layer. That was just for guidance. And here we have done the PHP method of frequency separation. Let me show you the before and after. So this is the overall before and this is the after. Isn't that amazing? Now, after frequency separation, there's a lot of things you can do. And the tutorials for all of that has been linked up in the description of this video. So let me show you. I just took my time and edited the image to the fullest. And let me show you what I did after frequency separation. So after frequency separation, I did some small fixes here and there, took care of the hair outside and stuff. So if I turn this on, have a look, I removed the excess hair. And some hair were on the face, so I removed them as well. Have a look right here. So I removed them as well. Next, we took care of the skin tone. If you closely look on the forehead, it's a little more yellowish than this area, right? So we took care of the skin tone, we corrected it. Now the forehead looks fine, everything looks uniform. Keep in mind there's a great tutorial for just this. Check it out, links are in the description. Now after that, we took care of the left eye, we just brightened that up a little bit. Have a look at this. And then the right eye. Her left and right, not our left and right. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> then added some highlights to the hair. Have a look. Did a little bit of color grading. Right? Just a touch. Now, after all this, we did liquify. So let's turn this on. Okay. Now to make her a little bit in form and shape. And after that, the last step would be sharpening. So if I turn on the sharpening, see the image now looks amazing. Let's zoom in to see, observe the effect of sharpening. So before sharpening and after sharpening. So there you go. This is the before and this is the after. So that's how to apply the PHP method of frequency separation. Just a quick little recap. First of all, remove the blemishes. Secondly, you can use the action to separate the image into high frequency and low frequency layers. Now, once you have done that, anything that we will do, we will do between those layers, between the high frequency and the low frequency. The first step is patching. What do we do in that step? We use the patch tool and we target the big stuff, the big details. The second step is healing. We use the healing brush tool. And what do we target? The small details. And the third step is Polishing, we use the brush tool and we manually clean up the transition. That's it. And after that, you can do a whole lot of stuff like adding hair highlights or maybe color grading. The possibilities are limitless. I hope this tutorial helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Picks Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.